Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Soviet Russian Bayern. Today I have a returning guest, uh, George, Georgian Patriot 1998. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, my friend? I'm great. Uh, okay, so the subject of our video today is uh, wars uh, of the United States, in which the United States was involved, and uh, the Zionist influences these wars and other, you know. So, for the last like three decades, there have been a lot of the United States have been involved in a lot of wars overseas. Well, it shouldn't have happened because, like the Soviet, the Cold War ended like 26 years ago, and there should have been more peace in the world. But surprisingly, no. So why do you think? So. The first war uh, that happened after the Cold War, the most major war, uh, was the Gulf War, which was um, for, was a, was the when the United States in a coalition of a, I think twenty or so or twelve Middle Eastern, a couple mis a couple of Middle Eastern countries attacked uh, Saddam Hussein's forces after he attacked uh, Kuwait. Um, that's the official reason why we got involved because he attacked this small little defenseless country, Kuwait, right? Yeah. So that was the first war, you know, and then after this war, it was it was a very quick war. It was not really long. It was very we defeated his forces really quickly, and he was defeated. So he had to he had to retreat his forces back to Iraq. So before so after that, but oh not Bush, Bush and Clinton, they placed heavy sanctions on, on Iraq. Saddam, on Iraq, yeah. And they said, oh, we will show Saddam Hussein who's boss, you know. And these sanctions, which we'll see this trend while we, while we do this interview, that these sanctions don't really hurt the leader at all. You know, they don't do shit. The leader has, like, you know, palaces, he's got places, he's got, you know, he's got money. You know, he's got, you know, lives a nice lifestyle. All that does was affecting the ordinary people. So, and even in 60 Minutes, the American show would say, was saying that, 500,000 children died, and they asked this Secretary of State, Marin Albright, Albright who's um, yeah. Clinton's Secretary of State, who's, who's a yeah. Jew, she yeah. was asked, is this worth it? And she said, it's a very tough question, but I think the price is worth it. So yeah, these people yeah. don't really care how many people die, and this such as just children. They many, well, the sanctions mostly kill weak people, like children, old people, or sick, like, you know, you know, yeah. ish. Doesn't really hurt. I mean, the men it hurts everybody, but it hurts the most weakest of society. And but that was not the end of it, you know. As we'll get there. But the first major war in the last 20 years, almost 20, yeah, almost 20 years, is um, the Afghanistan war. It's the longest serving war that we've been in. America's been in, and you know, more longer than the Vietnam War. And this reason was after 9/11. Whether you believe it's a hoax or not. It was done by someone else or not, whatever. This this was used as an excuse to attack Afghanistan. Yeah. And that's what immediately happened afterwards. We invaded them around 2001 and we're still there. Uh, Obama said we would get rid of the forces. That didn't happen. And Trump actually accelerated the troop deployments in Afghanistan. So, like they said, they said, oh, they were doing this to look for Osama bin Laden and all this was, you know, to stop um, called the Taliban, you know, stop the Taliban and the radical jihadists that lived, live over there. Well, that's not really the case, well, I, I think. The reason why many of these countries will be mentioning uh, this will be a trend is that Afghanistan at this time did not have a, a centralized bank, a, a Rothschild bank in their country. They did not have that, you know, which, you know, they don't, the, the elite does not want that. They want to have to control everyone's country in some way and have control of their resources. And Afghanistan also, while it does not have oil like Iraq or other countries, they have such a valuable amounts of mineral resources, right? They have like, great rare minerals that most places don't have. So, of course, the elite want to have this, these minerals for themselves and to exploit these nations. And that's the, pretty much the trend. And that we've never, and this, it's very ironic though, you know, we were again, you know, I think we should never get involved in Afghanistan because no one should ever get involved in that place, you know, no one could ever defeat them, you know, even Trump said many years ago, not many years, a year or two ago, he was talking about Afghanistan, he said, he mentioned the Soviet Union, you know, and we saw what happened to them, mate, which was, you know, was right, you know, that really hurt their economy, the Soviet economy, you know, it really was one of the worst mistakes the president did, you know, I'll be honest with you, but it's ironic though, 
during that war, we were supporting the same people that we were supposedly fighting, right? Mm -hmm. And the one, we were supporting, there's a picture of Zim Brzezinski, Brzezinski, yeah, Brzezinski with Osama bin Laden. Yeah. And they were fighting, and they were fighting these jihadis against the Russian people. Yeah. And they, the reason they were doing that is they were, they didn't want the Soviet or essentially new Russia, the communist Russian empire to have more influence. And that's all. And, Afghanistan was right next to their Central Asian republics, so they were trying to gain some control. But America did not want Russia to, you know, have this, which I don't think Russia should have got, or Soviet Union should have gotten involved in Afghanistan. But the point is, I would have not supported these jihadis. I would have just stayed out, you know, my, you know, hands are off, you know, let them have their own problems, let them fight them by themselves. Yeah. But many, it's really disastrous for the Soviet Union. It's very disastrous for us. But it's really ironic though they supported the same people that they were supposedly that did these attacks that we're fighting to, even now. And it's really hypocr hypocritical, and it really disgusts me that they were doing this against you know, the Soviet Union, against the Russian people. Because yeah. I think they did this is because the Soviet Union was in a different pit phase now. It was not like this, what people always say, Judeo-Bolshevik hellhole, like it was in, from 1917 to 1938 or something. It was not like that. It was becoming a lot more... It was transitioning. It was becoming a lot more Russian-like. It was uh, promoting more of their culture. The yeah. Orthodox Church was not as re relentlessly persecuted. It was not really well treated, but it was okay. It was treated well. And people were living okay. My father lived during Brezhnev's time, and he said, well, he used to dislike Brezhnev. Well, no, I want this motherfucker to you. Once you're going to die. But he said that Brezhnev, you know, under Brezhnev, you know, things were very stable. It wasn't like insanity, like under Khrushchev, the stupidity of Khrushchev, or ruthlessness of Lenin or, or brutality of Stalin or anything. It was a very, it was a very mild man. He was a very, yeah. very kind man, you know. But it was, he was not a bad person at all, and that's why they didn't like him, and they didn't want him to uh, have any influence. The U.S. wants to get rid of any competition. Yeah. So that's why we got involved in Afghanistan. So back to Iraq, right? Yeah. So also after 9/11, same excuse. They said that we have to we have to invade Iraq because so-called WMDs, weapons of mass destruction, which we all know it's bullshit. Because Saddam Hussein, after yeah. the night during the 90s, he destroyed his weapons. Which, to be honest, I don't think that was a good idea. Which because you know that left him vulnerable to attack. Yeah. But yeah, he got rid of his weapons, and then we had the Secretary of State again, uh, American Secretary of State, it was a black guy, Colin Powell. He was holding yeah. this <coughs> some kind of sample at the U at the United Nations, yeah, saying yeah, this yeah. is proof of Saddam Hussein having weapons of mass destruction. And <clears throat> U.S., Britain, and NATO states like Poland got involved. Even Georgia got involved in this because, you know, they wanted to get on their, yeah. on their good side, right? Which, no, it did, like I told you in your last interview, that that didn't do shit with anything. Yeah. But still, it, that's, that was the excuse, and that's what happened. So we went there in 2003, and we left, I think, around 2011, right? Uh, my Obama was there. But the reason why we attacked them was not because of WMDs. They knew. They lied. They knew they were lying. It was not, oh, they made a mistake. They knew what they were doing. They wanted to do this because, like, like Afghanistan, did not have a Rothschild-owned bank. But another reason why is that Saddam Hussein was going to sell his oil for euros, so that's why the America was very annoyed. Now that's why many, like France and some other European countries, did not get involved in this war, ironically, because he was trying to sell his oil with the euro, and that you, the, the U.S. did not want the dollar to, you know, they wanted to use their, their currency, and they don't like their currency to be challenged by anybody. This is just, this is a common trend they always had with leaders, and they've always been like Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein supported the Palestinian people against Israel, and he was always fighting. He was always defending their interests. And he, even during the 1980s, he wanted to attack Israel, uh, you know, when, during the, what's it called, the Lebanese Civil War, yeah. Lebanese War, when they when, when freaking Israel attacked Lebanon, he was going through Syria and asking Assad's father to go there. Assad's father didn't let him go. But the point is, he was against the, the, the powers that be. So yeah. after that, we captured him. Uh, we, we knocked down his statues, right? Oh, yeah, we liberated the people, you know. The Kurds are safe now. The Shias are safe. You know, we knocked out. You know, we destroyed. You know, invaded his country and defeated him. His armies really quick. Because, you know, these countries were weak. You know, they were not yeah. superpowers. They were just countries that had armies, but they were not capable of fighting America. So they lost. They lost. You know, and they captured Saddam Hussein, and then they, uh, you know, did a, a trial, like a Nuremberg trial thing, and they uh, executed him. They hung him. They recorded it uh, on 2006. Yeah. So after they hung him, well, you know, what happens after that? You know, all kinds of sectarian issues happen. Because Iraq yeah. is a very 
I don't like to use it, but diverse country, essentially. It has um, Sunni, which Saddam Hussein belonged to. He was a Sunni yeah. Muslim. It was a Shia, because you know, they're next to Iran. They have Shia influence on that border. And they have the Kurds in the north. So I went up to this Saddam Hussein, who kind of like, you know, he was brutal, but you have to have that in this kind of society to be, you know, keep these people, you know, at, it's, you know, at bay. But now, since he was broken and the sectarian issues, then this, this civil war, like civil war situation happened. And then Islam, Islamists gained power over there. ISIS or Al-Qaeda, all sorts of people that the people were supposed to be fighting, right? No, mm-hmm. we're helping them, we're funding them. Even Obama said, we are training ISIL forces in Syria. So <laughs> he himself made a stupid mistake. And even Biden one time said, you know, we're, our allies are supporting ISIS, Saudi Arabia and all of them. So 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 called that we're protecting you know we're fighting muslim terrorism while we're supporting wahhabi saudi arabia and yeah. their they threats and saddam hussein was a muslim man but he was a really he, iraq had a lot of christians at that time when he when they you know, yeah 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 now it's 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 all oh man it's so depleted man it was it was it was reduced to absolutely nothing now most of them are like they ran away to other countries and it's very unfortunate or they were killed, or they couldn't, were forced to convert by these these bastards. Islam, and, some, yeah. and also, and their ethnic groups like, what's it called? The Shias are fighting, you know, having issues too with these Sunni jihadists, right? They're yeah, killing yeah, yeah. Shias again. So, so they're helping the poor Shias. Yeah, yeah, sure. And Yazidis, Yazidis is another uh, group in the Middle East that also been really persecuted by ISIS and uh, Al Qaeda. So it's brought nothing but bloodshed to Iraq, and unfortunately, it's, it's you know they, I don't, it's very really unfortunate that that they did this. But like I said, this was like a before the war in Iraq. This was like a, was like planned for like almost for over 15 years to destroy them after you know the the Kuwait situation. So there was a slow process. They you know they beat his army in Kuwait, and then they put sanctions on his country to weaken yeah. him and his people, and put them in such a horrible condition. And thus, then they attacked them using false pretexts. Pretexts. Yeah, yeah. So next one we're going to talk about is the most upsetting one to me is Libya. Libya. Yeah, Libya. It's most, well, unlike Afghanistan and Iraq, Libya was not directly had boots on the ground directly. You know, it's a different kind of situation they had there. Is that they had it was this was, was a NATO coalition of bombing uh, Libya for over a year, almost a year, to get rid of the so-called evil dictator Gaddafi. So evil dictator who, who had the support of ruining ninety-five percent of his people. And that's the only thing. You can never have 100% this uh, love from your people. You're never, never going to have that. It's impossible. It's not such an egalitarian society, you know, a utopian society. You're not going to have that. You're going to always have some discontent. And so what we notice that the Zionists do, that they use grassroots legitimate discontent, and then they fund it to make their own agenda. That's what happened during the Arab Spring, when this is when this happened. Yeah, yeah. And Gaddafi did not want this to happen. Gaddafi was begging these, these people that, listen, I will resign, I will leave. My son, we, we, my family will leave. We, we won't. We won't. We we'll, won't. We leave Libya. We're gonna leave. Just don't bomb my country. Turkey, Qatar, and NATO said, "Now fuck you. We're gonna do. We're gonna bomb you, and then we're gonna rebuild you. We're gonna destroy you." And then Gaddafi said, "Okay, I see how it is." So he put a. He did his best. He stood his ground. Unfortunately, they kept bombing his palaces, bombing him. So no. So Gaddafi could, you know, get out. He has to get out, right? So and then thus. <laughs> Clinton's people, you know, these jihadis killed him, they grabbed him, and they tortured him, you know, the horrible video of him bloodied and maimed. And so it's very depressing what happened to him, and the yeah. same thing happened, you know, but the difference was this was not as overtly in their face, but still, it was very traitorous, and it was, it was illegal. What Obama did was illegal. He should have gotten impeached for this. It was, a, yeah. it was illegal. It was illegal. Well, illegal action. You know, but it's not like these people can get away with anything, apparently. So, after... And they said the supposed reasons all that the Arab Spring and you know, Gaddafi's killing his people, or it's all it's all crap. Like I said, he like Saddam Hussein did not have a Rothschild bank, and he was opposing Israel for over forty years since he came to power in, in the nineteen late sixties. He's always been opposing them, and he was a true socialist leader. He was a yeah. legitimate socialist who cared for his people. You know, he was like he was inspired by Nasser, who was the Egyptian leader. But he was a legitimately good man. They were trying to destroy him since 1980 when Reagan was there, but they failed. But, you know, this time they, they succeeded this time, unfortunately, and they killed him. But also, like Saddam Hussein, he wanted to sell his oil for gold in currency, gold. Yeah. Which, they don't want that. I like said, for example, they always want to have their little fake currency, this little debt-based currency at interest. Thus, they didn't like that, and thus, 
That's why NATO, completely every nation in NATO was involved, not just America, all of them were involved, because it was not, it was not just a euro, now it's a golden currency, which they don't like, they don't want that to happen. Yeah, so yeah. they got rid of him, and they destroyed his country, and Libya, like Iraq, it's like a tribal society. It's a tribal country. It's full of many tribes. And then, you know, it's, 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 like, it's like kind of anarchy, like militia there. You know, it's, it's, it's such a destabilized country now. It was one of the most beautiful, most prosperous nations in Africa before this shit happened. And now look what happened to it. It's, it's, it's been reduced. It's, it's been destroyed. You know, Gaddafi gave his people the ability to go abroad and study abroad. He gave everyone a Libyan. He made this promise that he would give every Libyan house, and he did. But then his father died before he was able to house his parents because he said, I'm going to put you before my family. It was a really selfless act, a really selfless man. Yeah. Selfless individual. Really, very good man. And it's very upset. It makes me very upset that he died, you know? Yeah. I wish he was here. But, yeah. But, uh, yeah. He was trying to help the people. He was also yeah, trying. He, he also was. Uh, farming. Go ahead. You have something to say? Yeah. Well, um, many people are criticizing Russia and Medvedev and Putin for not vetoing the the intervention, the NATO yeah. intervention in Libya. Um, as far as I remember, uh, me. As far as I remember, um, China and Russia. They did not for, vote for, but they abstained from voting. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, many people, especially Lib and especially some some Russian and many Arab nationalists and many like anti-Israel people see this as an act of treason. They say Putin, Medvedev, Russia, and China, and uh, they have basically betrayed Gaddafi. But seriously, but was Gaddafi that like? I heard that Gaddafi sent his troops um, to Yugoslavia to fight on the side of the Bosnian Muslims against the Orthodox Serbs. I don't know, is that true and have you heard about this? No, that's actually very interesting, you know, which I wouldn't be surprised now since he's a Muslim, he's going to see a Sunni Muslim, he's probably going to support them. I'm not surprised that he did. But Russia. I think Russia should have voted against, but they didn't vote for it. So they were kind of neutral. Yeah. But that's a mistake. But Russia can fix this mistake. Yeah, it's his mistake. Next, and I think it's one of the Putin's... Mi I, well, 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 people, especially my critics and critics of me, critics of Putin, critics of the yeah. Eurasianism and Eurasianist school of thought, they think that me and people like me are some sort of Putin worshippers, like, like he's a god and, and we worship him and blah, blah, blah. No! I do realize that Putin is 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 as human being as me and you and other people, other humans, and uh, like any human being, he makes mistakes. And I think that Libya is was one of his big mistakes. Yeah, I agree. But you know, he and China fixed his mistake with Syria. But before we get to Syria, yeah, is that one more thing is that Gaddafi was putting farming. He was actually introducing farming to this desert country. It's a desert country, Libya. It's a desert country, and he somehow found the water under the Sahara Desert, and he was friends with. Many with Mandela, you know, this left, this left to me, loves the communist now, Mandela, you know, oh, he's great, he's great. And then they killed the guy who was his friend, you know, <laughs> he killed his friend. And he was a friend of even with Mugabe. He was friend with all these African leaders. They were all depressed when they killed him. You know, he was a friend of the African people. He was a, he was a, he was a, he respected blacks. And look what happened now. Now, even the squad talks about all this slave thing that's happening on Libya now. But this was happening after they destroyed Libya. This was not happening before him. But anyway, towards Syria, China and Russia fixed their mistake. They vetoed it. They keep vetoing this, this intervention in Syria. Syria's civil war is pretty much over now, thank yeah. God. But man, it's like seven years of, of hell you know, that they had to go through. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, was, it wasn't for uh, Syria, uh, it wasn't for Russia or China. And Assad would have been, you know, like Gaddafi, he would have died, you know? He would have, or something would have happened to him, I don't know. But he, he, Syria would have been ended up the same situation. But thankfully, Putin and China said, no, the hell with you, UN, we're going to say, no, hell you, screw you, we're going to not let, not let this happen. Yeah. And Russia, Russia and Iran expressed their help. Yes, yes, because basically, I'm sorry, because basically in 2015, before when Russia intervened, Assad was basically losing the war. I mean, if, if Russia didn't intervene, maybe in 2016 Assad would have been like overthrown, overthrown already, and Syria would would be in chaos right now. But no, Russian air force and Russian airspace and navy intervened and 
basically saved the day. No, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna take credit from the Syrian Arab army and yeah. what the situation on the ground because some of people, some of pro Syrian, some of pro Assad people accusing me of like taking credit for the ar for the Syrian army and saying that so Russia did no Russia only helped be uh, helped profound help enormously to to uh, to the Assad army to gain in order to gain victory for them but still without Russia's help I don't think Assad by now would have been like uh, alive yeah, yeah I, I agree, agree. it's not just Russia Iran, Iran, Iran too got really yeah, involved Iran, in this war. yeah we should not forget Iran. Iran. Yeah, so the Shia country and Assad belongs to an Alawite, which is a branch of Shia, so they have a strategic interest there too. But no, no matter no, what it is, is that they are on the right side. They were both on the right side on this war. And again, Syria does not, not the Iraq has a Rothschild bank. Assad, you know, he's, he's opposing Israel. He's, he's, been, he's been a critic of all their actions, yeah. their support for the Iraq war, their support for Libya's intervention. He was against all of this. And I invite everyone, no leader is perfect, and I guess it's flawed, he ain't perfect, but he's a very, really educated, well, smart man, really kind leader. He cares for his people, he protects the Christian minority. His father was the same way. His father cared for the Christian people to be with Christians. Because he himself is a minority, he's an Alawite. Yeah, he himself is a minority, but he protects the Syrian, uh, the Christians as well. Yeah. Like his father did. And, you know, you should see videos of him, you know, going to these camps and visiting these churches, you know, they, 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 the cocksuckers, to borrow my language, destroy these churches and vandalized, you know, this old, old, ancient, yeah. biblical places, you know, this is like these are the oldest, oldest places of Christianity in the Middle East, Iraq and Syria and Palestine too. All these areas, more, more than, than the Caucasus, more, more than Russia, more than anybody. This is the oldest place of Christian yeah, world was yeah. born, right? And this is the Middle East. And they destroy this beautiful history. And it's very unfortunate, and you know, they can't repair that damage. You can't repair this damage. No matter how hard you try, you can never emulate well, that history. Yeah. Basically, and before, the, yeah, before the Islamic conquest of the Middle East, uh, well, Syria, Iraq, uh, yeah, Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, these were all, in Egypt, even, these, these were all Christian lands, Orthodox Christian lands. Exactly, exactly. yeah, it's really true, yeah, you know, yeah. but despite the, even without being able to spread the religion, they were still, they were still minority Christians in Palestine. Before this Israeli shit happened, there were Christians who lived in Palestine, who lived in, Muslim, who lived in across Palestine, but, you know, they left, they were persecuted, and they left. Or they converted to Islam, you know, for whatever reason, you know, whatever, that's their business. But, yeah, they just they destroyed all this history, this beautiful history, this church. You can't really rebuild it. You can, you know, save it and keep it as long, you know, but you can't rebuild what was there, you know, thousands of years ago. You can't fix it, unfortunately. So that, even though Assad and Syria are stable again, the damage was done. They destroyed his country. He's pretty much... You know, has to now he's, he's, he's got to clean up this country now. He's got to clean up everything, of course. Yeah, yeah. But, so, the next target they have is Iran. And recently we've seen these protests in the last, I think, over two weeks now. They've been doing these statements, agitating these protests. And I think these protests... Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you. Because I don't like really what's happening in Iran. It really seems to me they're trying to repeat the, you know, the Ukrainian scenario over there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a color revolution, essentially, that's what they're saying, yeah. yeah. You know, they've been doing, they did this in 2009 in a similar situation. See, they realized that Iran, unlike Iraq, is a much bigger country. Over 80 million people there, I don't think Americans want to get involved. No matter how much Trump talks about evil Iran, I don't think most Americans will support this now. They're not going to, they can't really. So they've got to do it another way. They have to infiltrate that country. Yeah. And they can't bomb it or put food on like they did in these other countries. They have to, uh infiltrate that nation and just destroy from within. And I have my issues with Iran, it has this, they have their share of bombs, but you know, like I said, I don't support what's happening, you know, what's what they're trying to push. This is the Israeli, Mossad, CIA, and MI6 kind of plan to infiltrate that country, get rid of the ruling regime, and put their own, you know, their own boys in there, you know, pro-Zionist boys there. And now, I mean, they had, they, like I said, the Iranian protests did start off, I think, with some legitimate discontent, you know, the economies, you know, yeah. because, because, because well, they put the sanctions on that country, of course, they have economic problems, but people were saying, yeah, the economy's not doing so well, 
and, and um, you know, we would like a little bit more freedom, we don't get a head job and all this, which is fine. But then they start changing the rhetoric. We want to kill the dick, we got to get rid of the dialogue, we got to kill the dick, the dick dictator, we have to overthrow this oppressive regime. Like, all of a sudden, it changed. It went from this, you know, basic, you know, this content to fucking, let's get rid of the regime all of a sudden. Like, what the hell happened? Money was put in there. And... Iran has a really small minority of Christians too, but you know they have and they treat them okay. They're not perfect, but they treat them okay. And uh, they, like, well, like the other countries, like I said, don't have a Rothschild bank. They don't have one. They, 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 they have a good oil resource, and they are they protected uh, Assad and then like that. And they, they follow their plans. Iran was a lot more involved. I think they Russia. They actually put their you know, troops, their boy, you know, their many, many troops died. You know, they put their lives at risk to protect Assad. So. And, and they, they don't, don't like that they're, they're fighting ISIS. ISIS. They're, they're, they're fighting, they're fighting they're ISIS. ISIS. They're, they're going under the terrorists. Like, like, they, they, they never committed terrorism, terrorism. these people. people. Right? They've never done that. Who, who has committed terrorism, terrorism, according to you? Saudis? Yeah. And, and Gulf State people from, from the Gulf States. states. Uh, never call any Iranian doing it for that reason. So, yeah, what an evil state Iran is, huh? So, evil Islamic terrorist state. That's Saudi Arabia, but anyway. But yeah, I hope that Iran, I hope and pray that Iran will survive through this. They will, you know, maintain the bilateral and the president will maintain power. And, you know, I noticed that over the last 20, 10 years, they've been slowly changing, you know. Women used to be, there's a lot, it's not like 1980 anymore, like, you know, like when Khomeini came there, you know, like hardcore, you know, it's a lot more, like, you know, people are allowed to have to wear the hijab, but it's very loosely worn, you know, they wear very loosely on their heads, and, you know, they, they live like very nice lives, you know, around. Tehran's a very beautiful city, from what I've seen of it, it's a very beautiful nation, they're trying to build, uh, build their country, and they care for their people. So, so uh, I definitely, I definitely support, support their regime to stay at least for, and, and then let them, you know, progress, progress themselves, let them flourish and let them progress. And then I guarantee you, you let them do, but, yeah, yeah, let, let them, them progress and let them uh, flourish. And maybe, if you don't agitate them, them and create problems, maybe they will slowly get rid of these hijab things and slowly become a little bit more tolerant. Give, give them time. time. But, you know, overthrowing, overthrowing these secular leaders has only created Islamic, Islamic terrorists. I guarantee you, you know, Iran, you probably put someone even worse in there. there. Some, some hardcore, you know, crazy, crazy person. Some hardcore Islamist or some, some Zionist tool. You know, know some, some Wahhabi shit. shit. We, we don't, don't want, want that. that. I'd, rather have, I'd rather live under a Iranian system than live under Wahhabism, you know. I definitely take that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, and then we, we see that Trump, Trump was, you know, really accelerating his rhetoric towards Iran. And, and another, another nation, the last nation, nation we're talking about today, is uh, North, Korea. North Korea. This is the only country that's not in the Middle East. North Korea, North Korea is a really unique, unique situation, huh? They're in Asia, Asia, next to China and Russia. Russia. So, so North, North Korea, Korea, you know, they've been playing with North Korea. So for the last, I think, few years, you know, they've been trying to really accelerate problems with them for the last few years. Even under Obama, they were accelerating problems. But... The, the reason, reason, again, North, North Korea, Korea has no lost child bank there, you know, and, and, but North Korea is a lot more dangerous situation, you know why? Because China told Trump, listen, if you attack these people, we're going to put our troops there, which could create a, could create a war. And Russia said, yeah, we're not going to support you if you attack these people. We, leave these, you know, we don't support you in this. So, this is a really dangerous situation. The marriage would get, become the aggressor. And, and I start, start shit with North Korea, Korea. Could be, it could lead to like a really bad, bad conflict. conflict. But people always complain that oh, Kim Jong-un is he shooting his rockets around, around he's, he's, he's creating problems. Well, if, if you stop freaking training, training these educating him and you know, uh, uh, yeah. annoying him with the South, South Korean, Korean troops on his border, border you know, you know, haunting him, haunting him, him, him and Japanese troops and haunting him, saying, you know, trying to poke him in his freaking eye, you know, he's not gonna get angry. Of course. Yeah. yeah, and, and he, he saw what happened to Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein, and he said, no, I'm not getting rid of my weapons. weapons. What the hell with you? Uh, uh, I forgot to mention that. Gaddafi also got his weapons, weapons after Well, yeah, the and, and, and about North Korea, and Putin, and Putin said, like, guys, North Koreans are going to eat grass, but they are not going to get rid of their nuclear arsenal. Like, forget it. Like, Saddam get, got rid of his nuclear arsenal, and he got fucked. Uh, Gaddafi also got rid of his chemical weapons, and he also got fucked. And then Assad got rid of his chemical weapons, and he would have gotten fucked, but if it wasn't for Russia, but still. 
yeah. yeah. North, North Korea, Korea he is smart. smart. He's His father, father too was there. They've been doing this for a long time. time. They, North, North Korea, Korea actually does have a fight. Putin was talking about it. They, they were willing to, you know, know probably restrict, you know, you know, not making a nuclear weapon, but they were demanding. These these people were demanding so much from them. And Kim Jong Il said, no, no, fuck you. Get out of here. And and his son is doing the same thing. And like I said, North Korea also. I like these other nations. It's a very homogeneous nation. Yeah, and it's North Korea is like 99.998% ethnically Korean. Yeah, it's yeah. probably the most homogeneous nation on Earth. Yeah, yeah it is. And, and the, the, also, there's not a single Jew, Jew in yeah. North Korea. There's Jews in Iran, there were Jews in these other countries, at least, at least back then. There's not Jews in North Korea. North Korea. <laughs> yeah. So, so called for your Judeo-Communists, they're not, they don't have Jews. <laughs> they don't have Jews. There's Jews in China, there's Jews in Vietnam, but there's no Jews in, in North Korea. Not a single one. <laughs> they are against Israel too. You know, they condemn Israel a lot. I listen to like their state media. Their state media has condemned Israel many times, and they're not they're not friends. <laughs> they don't like them. <laughs> they support the Palestinians, which is good. They support the Palestinians, and they're struggling against Israel. Yeah. But Exactly. exactly. Kim Jong Un is not going to get his nuclear weapons. Why would he do that? You know, so you can just kill him and destroy his country and put make him a slave to the to the you know IMF and the World Bank. No, 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 no. He said no. <laughs> He said no, and uh, he is a very he's gonna he's gonna keep fighting. I think he's gonna keep fighting, but this is good. But this could be dangerous. This is a very dangerous war because if you attack in America, if Trump starts shit and he attacks him, does it preemptive strike on him? China will you know do what they did in 1949 or 50. They'll put their troops there, like they did in the Korean War. They'll put their faces there. The Russia and themselves probably they'll be as involved, but they'll be like, yeah, America, you're on your own. You deal with China and North Korea yourself. <laughs> well, probably Russia officially will say that. Or well, I remember during the Korean War, I know that the the Soviet U Russia or then then as a Soviet Union. The, uh, covertly, they sent pilots like Russian pilots to North Korea on the Russian planes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah they, they sent planes, planes yeah. yeah. But, but the Chinese were most involved. You know, yeah, like, yeah. not more, you know, there was one main force is reinforcement. But, but yeah, 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 China has nuclear, nuclear weapons. weapons. Whether, it doesn't, doesn't matter how they got it, they cheated or whatever, they have nuclear weapons. Do you, you want, want to fight, fight with them? them? Do you, you want, want to get into a war with China, China with the, you know, a nuke? No. no. So Same thing with Russia. I want to get into a war with China either. So, so this is a very, this is a very, you're playing with fire here. So, you know, North Korea could be, could be like a, like a powder keg, you know, it can explode and create so much problems. Yeah. Like I said, if you stop freaking annoying him and stop trying to agitate him with these drills in South Korea, you know, intimidating him and saying, hey, look at us, we're so much better than you, uh, you know, you know and insult him, him and he, he and call, call him, you know, call, call him Rocket, Rocket Man or call him Fat Ass or something. <laughs> you know, trying to create problems. You know, he's fat, but who cares? Yeah. 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 Create problems with, with him. him. Like, leave him alone. You know, like, just, just leave, leave that, that, that man alone. alone. Let him do what he wants. Like, his people, what I've seen, respect him. From what I see, I'm not 100% sure it's always propaganda. Well, maybe it is, but from what I see, they don't want to overthrow him. Believe me, they really want to be wood. Yeah, and, and, they're and they're suffering from, from sanctions, sanctions too. That's, that's why they're starving, starving because you put sanctions on them. And that's not hurting. That's not hurting him. He's he's pretty he's pretty full, you know. <laughs> he's pretty full. He has enough food to eat, but his people don't because you're putting sanctions on him. I don't know. Stop, you know, putting so much fucking sanctions and actually keep adding them. Yeah. Maybe the people would not suffer as much, did you think? Yeah, but, but basically, the, those assholes, the, the, they put sanctions on anybody. They put sanctions on Russia, and but yeah. still, but the, uh, Putin didn't suffer, and the Russian government, well, some people suffer, and, uh, well, uh, well, the, but I don't gonna, despite what the Western media said, Russia is not starving, Russia is not, like, and uh, actually, right this year we we are like the 2017 was year when the Russia got adapted to sanction adapts to sanctions, and this year we Russia ends with a small but still economic growth, not a recession. And because yeah. I remember when sanctions against Russia were in, just implemented, have just been implemented, there were many people, including here on YouTube, who saying that in, in a couple of years Russian economy will collapse and Putin will return Crimea, Putin will like apologize and put. That didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. We don't give a fuck. Yeah. 
Well, the sanctions, yeah, yeah, but you see, Russia's Russia a bigger country, they're a lot more, they're more involved, you know, not because isolated, it's a very isolated, they get more help maybe from China, they're pretty much by themselves, so they're small, yeah. they, have, they have minerals too, they have minerals too, but they have actually pretty decent amount of minerals, but they're small and they rely on themselves, like Iraq, you know, they, 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 you know, they're not that able to adapt like Russia does, unfortunately, unless the people will, I don't know, die or get sick. But, but, you know, you know like, like I said, said this is a lot of escalation issues. issues. I don't think Hillary, Hillary would have been much worse, worse, you know, but like, like I, I said, it doesn't matter. matter. It's, it's two faces, you know, you have the, you can the red one, you take the war. There, there probably would have been a war already right now. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. It's like, you take, you take, it's like getting shot in the leg, like getting shot or getting stabbed, like cut your head off or something. It's still, it's still bad, but which is, I don't know. But it's like, you know, they always have this um, good metaphor. You take the red pill, you take the blue pill, you know? You pick one, like from the Matrix, you pick the blue pill, uh, pill you want to drink, you took the red pill. But anyway, Trump, I think, you know, he is a hostage. I think he has to um, obey his Zionist bosses. You know, yeah. his boys, his boys. He, he, he's, he's, he's not the real. He's not the real leader. He's not the real leader. Yeah, the real I really leader. want his guy. This guy, uh, his his. I believe his son-in-law. Yeah, Kushner. How? What's his name? Kushner. Kushner. Yeah, Jared Kushner. Yeah. Jared Kushner. Yeah. I think he's just him and all these other Jews, too, yeah. you know, there's a lot of Jews. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's a hostage, and he, he can't do I mean, he's done some good things now for the American economy. He's done some things, you know. He's not, I'm not, like, I'm not bashing 100%, but like I said, what the hell does it matter if you're helping the economy when you're going to get us to a war, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, if your home is good, you get nuked. Okay, great. You know, you just destroyed everything. Great. Well, wonderful. <laughs> Nuclear radiation. That's great. All right, so... I mean, good people have to, you know, have to go into war now, and more, more American boys yeah, have to die. Uh, absolutely no reason. For absolutely people, no reason. <laughs> people say, uh, people, uh, the anti-Trump people in America say, oh, it's Russia, Russia, who got Trump into power, it's Russia, Russia, Russian collusion. But in Israel, many, like, Jewish, Jewish nationalists and Jewish lobbies, they get offended, take some offense to it. They say it's actually not Russia, it's actually Jews and the Israeli lobby who put Trump in power. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's Israeli, Israeli, you know, Israeli thing, Israeli, Israeli interest. You know, why the hell do we have an eight pack? It's like called American Israeli. It's like a it's, 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 it's a lot before foreign damnation. I don't see anything from Russia in this country, especially at that caliber, that kind of level. I mean, of any country, you know, stupid Saudi Arabia. I don't see any nation that has as much influence as Israel does. Yeah. And you give them thirteen billion dollars. Yeah, we give them more aid than we give freaking Latin America and Africa. Yeah, yeah. The whole those big continents. So, so who's in charge here? <laughs> is Trump in charge or is Benjamin Netanyahu and his boys in charge? <laughs> he's their, he's the, they're the, Israel is his boss. He's going to obey his boss. If he doesn't obey his boss, he's going to end up like Kennedy with a bullet in his head. So, or like any other person who defies them, he'll die. So. Well, even, well, I just want to say that uh, there is this bogus, like, notion that, um, all Democrats are slightly like less pro-Israel than the Republicans. Well, before Trump, Obama, like Obama is, the, but, but he was as if, well, he was probably as if not more pro-Israel than Trump or Bush. No, I, yeah, yeah, but you know, I think Trump is the most Zionist, but they're all the same, they're all the same, yeah, it's all yeah. bullshit, but, but he actually did it, he actually did it, he actually made Jerusalem their capital, he literally said, yeah, I'm gonna do it, these other assholes, they were, they were opening their mouths, they were clapping, I'm gonna fucking do it, and he actually did it, so... Well, well, you know, man, it's a man of action, action right? right? You know, so, so he, he, he truly really showed off who, who you know, who really, really runs him. You know, he showed off his colors, and uh, it's all, it's always, you know, I'm afraid, you know, there's, there's also other countries you know, they don't like. You know, it's Venezuela, you know, I mean, not to the same degree, but Venezuela's also been pretty demonized. You know, they don't like them. They put sanctions on, 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 on uh, what's not, not Chavez, Maduro's kind of, you know, not Maduro. You know, they don't like Venezuela, I guess, for some reason. You know, I don't know what the reason is, but there's always countries that slightly, they're not like North. Korea, but they're like slightly doing something they don't like. There's always nations they don't like. Even before, I think there was a few countries that didn't have a rush out being before 9 11. You know, it was Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Sudan, Cuba, and North Korea. Yeah. 
So, so after that, that, you know, Afghanistan gets knocked, knocked off, then you get knocked off Iraq, Iraq then you get knocked off Libya, maybe even Sudan, Sudan. You know, I don't know, and maybe that's why Sudan, Sudan became South Sudan, Sudan. they split, I think, yeah, yeah. Iraq doesn't live maybe that's what happened, I don't know what the situation was, but same thing, I don't know what happened in Sudan, but something happened to them, and they're freaking, they're knocked off, and now, Cuba, Cuba, after, after what, the what the hell, this 2015, the, you know, the restoration of relationships, and they, all of a sudden, they take off sanctions, all of a sudden, they, you know, they're not putting sanctions anymore, Rothschild Bank is in Cuba, so Cuba knocked off, and what's left, Iran, and North Korea, and I, and I think Syria, maybe Syria, I don't know, they don't confirm that, but these two, Iran and North Korea, these are the most the most, the most defiant people, people but the most truly against this, this tyrannical. tyrannical. Other countries are iffy, you know, they, you know, they do, do their things, like China and Russia do a few things they don't like, but these two are like completely, go fuck yourself, yeah. we don't need your shit no more. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they're, 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 they're the most, they're most, they're most countries, countries that we may go to war with. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I think, but well, like Wesley Clark, this chap, he's the one who bombed freaking Belgrade, right? Yeah, NATO. Yeah, that's, that's a piece of shit, Jew. Uh, he, he said, said we're gonna, he had this list, they had a list of the countries they're gonna defeat, and, they, and they, they're pretty, pretty much getting there, and I think Iran, Iran is their last target. So Iran, Iran I think, we're gonna be fighting Iran, Iran first. If I were to pick, I'd like to predict something would have to happen in Iran. Either this stupid color revolution happens, some sexually type person gets there, or some shit, or some other kind of military or bomb, or some shit, or something like that. But, but and then, then I think North Korea is their is the last target. He's the last. Target. Target. I, think I think Kim Jong is the last target because, because I think they want to get rid of Iran first. And then we'll, we'll they'll, they'll go for him. They'll, they'll go for him next. next. But, but like I said, said uh, these, these people, people are insane. insane. They, they don't care. They have their bunkers. bunkers they can hide. If the nuclear war happens, if China bombs somebody or North Korea bombs some area, they don't care. They just go, okay. Who cares if my people, these these people die? Not my business. Who cares, yeah, you know? Not my, not my business. I make more money, money right? Yeah. At the expense of everyone else. <laughs> it's the <laughs> satanic people. They're, they're, they're fucking, they're fucking monsters. monsters. I, I'll, I'll tell you this. They're, they're, they're evil people. people. They're, they're, they're monsters. They need to be put on trial for their for their crimes. But anyway, I'm being off topic here. I'm being off topic here. But that's pretty much all I have to say about this situation, my friend. Thank you again for having. Do you have anything else to say before we end it off here? Well, yeah. I would like to say that some address some criticisms of uh, me and uh, of uh, Eurasian ideology <laughs> and school of thought because people who criticize me and I have addressed this issue before with Andrea Benz but I want to say it with you people criticize me saying that oh what you doing is basically you are a Russian imperialist well you oppose like NATO Western like US Israeli imperialism but you support your own imperialism and the Chinese imperialism so you are no better than the, those Zionist and NATO assholes w which you criticize well I think this is very bogus and uh, it's not true because like Eurasia and um, the Eurasianism is not about becoming a hegemon yourself it's about a counter hegemon it's not about like all of the us is overthrown and now it's russia becomes a hegemon no it's about multipolarity not unipolarity not not two or tripolar world, but multi multi m many poles of power like like russia china and eurasia and well yeah, yeah. Iran in the Middle East, Brazil in South America, like um, Australia maybe in South Pacific, or uh, basically many p poles of power, many centers of power all over the world, not just one like Russia instead of America. That's what many people don't get when we talk about Eurasianism and multipolarity. Yeah, and um, you see, and Putin. Is not um, people call Putin? Oh, he's a Russian imperialist. He wants to rebuild the USSR or Russian Empire. Dude, have you seen what he has done for his 18 years in power? What has he done to rebuild the Soviet Union? He he only helped to Crimea to escape the Ukraine because that's what Crimean people want to be part of Russia. That's pretty much the only thing he has done. What else has he done to re-establish the, the evil Soviet Union or the Russian Empire? Like nothing. Putin actually sucks at being a Russian imperialist. Maybe you yeah, think yeah, he's, 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 he he is not a Russian imperialist at all. 
He's, he's, he's bringing and doing his uh, part. Uh, my answer is he's doing a pretty shitty job, job, you know, <laughs> at that. You know, uh, he had many opportunities to take him. There's our country, there are countries that are pretty nice to Russia, and if he could manipulate his way, he could have gotten them, like Belarus, Kazakhstan. I, I think Kyrgyzstan, one of the other countries in the, in the, in the Central Asia, Armenia, and maybe Georgia, because you know, the war. So he could have went to Georgia. And then, and then got, got to Armenia, and then that's it. And maybe guys are punch on later. He could have gotten, gotten, gotten a lot of these territories, you know. You could, could think about it. Maybe not the Baltics, we could have gotten most of the other territories. And maybe Transnistria, this Moldova thing, position that's going on over there. He could have done a lot of things. And also, say, ex KGB, they always use that. Like I said, he's not like that, you know. Yeah, ex you know. Such a common thing. He goes to church, you know. He prays, and he believes in religious, you know. But what kind of communist does that, you know? Of course he was. He was a freaking yeah, yeah, okay, that's his past. Yeah, you can, yeah. Well, they would just form a KKK. You know, people, but the past is your past. Who cares? You know, as long as he doesn't act like that anymore. Yeah. And he's, and he's a truly, he cares for his people, people I think, that's, that's why I think. But to, to, to counter the level of the Eurasia, Eurasia and Russia, Russia or Chinese Imperialism, Imperialism, I'm like, okay, okay Russia, Russia has only a few bases, like, like three bases that I, that I know. Syria, Syria. It's, the it's the only foreign, foreign probably foreign, foreign not, not in his influence, I guess, Syria, I guess, and Armenia and Kazakhstan, and I think another situation in Kazakhstan. So it's in the three countries that Russia has bases. Three bases, maybe four or five, but three that I know of. America, hundreds, NATO, hundreds of bases. No, of course, the fucking little hope. China, okay, they have a little bit of South China Sea. Big, it's called South China Sea. Like, it says it in the, it says it in the name. It's like telling India, hey, India, you don't want to have, you don't want to have ships on the Indian Ocean. Like, fucker, it says India on it, but like, it's fine. We're telling Iran, Persian Gulf doesn't belong to you, like, Talking, talking about, about it, it's, 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 it's their name. So China, China has the right to put, to put its nose in their, in their area. It's their area. It's their area. Also, also China fucking, fucking yeah. taking pieces. Of course, China has a little, you know, some, some influence in the Australia, Australia and maybe some other. But see, it's in their spear. They're not fucking in Africa, fucking, fucking South, South America. America. They're not fucking in, in, the in the Yemen, Yemen or something and doing, doing their shit. shit. No, no, no. They do business. They're doing their business. Do I like it? No. You know what? Don't, don't compare the two. It's like, it's like comparing, comparing a fucking a fly, fly to a giant lion, lion or something. Yeah. Like it's really, really minuscule, or, or, or at least a dog, dog, dog to a lion. A dog, a dog yeah. to a lion. Like, like big, big difference. You know, you know. There's a big, it's a big difference, difference at least. You know, you know I guess people. people there are people who are completely against dominance, dominance but you know, people don't understand that bigger nations will tend to. Dominate, dominate smaller, smaller nations. nations. It's the way it works. It's the way it is. It's yeah. the way it's always been. Russia, Russia is a big nation. Georgia, Georgia Armenia. Armenia. We're small. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you want from me? What do you want? You know, China's, you know? China's, you know? China's big. Uh, uh, Korea, Korea yeah. and you know, you know Laos, Cambodia. Cambodia. Small. Like, shit. It's the way it is. It's the way it works. Uh, I, you know, even America. If America wants to get involved in South America or Mexico. Sure, 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 sure. That's their sphere. That's their influence. Right? Yeah. right? Cuba, that's their business. That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why Kennedy, Kennedy was so upset when Castro, Castro was having nuclear, nuclear weapons, weapons, right? He was so worried about, oh, oh no, we don't, we don't want to have nukes near, near us. us. Well, you're, you're pointing nukes at them now. You know, yeah. Poland, you're, 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 in, you're in their face now. <laughs> and then <laughs> Turkey, you're, point, you're poking, poking the bear, the bear <laughs> as they yeah. say. We don't want to release that bear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's pretty much to say all that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. well, it was a great interview. Uh, it was a pleasure having you on my channel. Yeah. So yeah. All right. All right, all right. Yeah. Cheers. Bye. Yes. Yes. Bye. bye.